I wanted to start by asking you just a few follow-up questions uh, to your speech. First, uh, you mentioned the CFPB mm -hmm. and how they do not get their funding directly through congressional appropriations. Correct. What kind of, uh, what, what, does that make it difficult for oversight <laughs> in the committee? It makes it difficult to get a phone call returned. Um, it makes it difficult to schedule a hearing. It makes it difficult to get answers uh, to questions, simple questions. Uh, when are you coming back? to see us again. We can't get an answer to that. Uh, it's been a, it has been a truly adversarial relationship. The CFPB, by virtue of the fact that they don't need Congress to exist, doesn't take very seriously con Congress's oversight role. So it makes it very difficult for us to, to advocate on behalf of your industry or anybody else, for that matter, uh, to the CFPB. Now, you guys have done a lot of hearings on the discrimination allegations that are going on there and and we've seen they're changing the performance reviews they're yeah. giving everybody fives people who got threes or fours <laughs> and they're spending over five million dollars on it do you agree with the decision to no do that? The, the, the place is just it's, it's a wonderful example of how a bureaucracy will function if it has no accountability to anybody um, it turns up being a joke and that's what the CFPB really has been in a, in a, in a, in a sick sad kind of way because you've got an institution that has tremendous authority over what y'all do for a living, over your businesses, over your members, um, but there's very little that your elected members of, of, of government can do to help you to protect you against, say, overreach or abuse by that institution. So it's extraordinarily frightening. Um, it's something that we should take a, a, a close look at, do take a close look at. I am somewhat encouraged in that we have some bipartisan support for reforms to the CFPB, uh, and we'll see if we can't make some progress on that in the next Congress. What reforms do you think need to be done? What are the top priorities in terms of changing the organization? You know, the agency? some of us like to get rid of it because we don't like the idea of there being a non-accountable federal agency, a self-funding federal agency, which is uh, sets a terrible precedent. Um, but short of that, let's assume that uh, we don't have the political ability to do that. What could we do in the meantime to make it less egregious? Um, you could replace the single director with a five-person commission, something that I believe that Barney Frank um, actually agrees with, and there's other Democrats who agree with that. Uh, Marlon Stutzman and Ed Perlmutter, uh, one Republican and one Democrat, have actually introduced a bill just in the last couple of weeks to uh, require the CFPB to go through a more transparent rule-making process similar to what the other agencies have to do. CFPB is not bound by the same rules that, say, uh, the Federal Reserve is bound by or the EPA or some other oversight agency. So if we, could, if we have bipartisan support for that, I think that bodes well for at least small improvements to the CFPB in the near future. Do you think a possible Republican Senate could help some of those reforms be pushed along to the president's desk? Yes. <laughs> in the short answer, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, uh, Harry Reid is preventing most of these from going forward. Even bills, by the way, that have Democrat support in the House. We've passed a, a slew of reform bills out of the House this year dealing with broad Frank more broadly, CFPB more narrowly. Uh, Democrats have supported them, and it's died in the Senate. So, yes, I think that a change of control in the Senate would allow us to at least force the president to have a debate on these issues, because right now that discussion is not taking place. You also mentioned the NCOA budget. Mm -hmm. uh, what challenges have you faced in terms of trying to get some answers on their budget? Yeah. Um, the, the challenges, again, there, there's a parallel to the CFPB because y'all fund the NCUA. So it's, it's, even though we have oversight over them, that there's formal oversight of the NCUA, it's, it's, it's not the same as taxpayer money. It's your money. Um, so it's not a direct congressional appropriation, at least it's not entirely a direct congressional appropriation, and that has made it difficult to get some straight answers out of the NCUA. There's no reason for them not to publish detailed budgets. I don't understand. Uh, it's common sense. It's human nature to think that if you're refusing to tell me something, you're refusing to tell me something because you don't want me to know what the answer is. You're hiding something, and that's, that's the natural inclination that, uh, that folks have right now about the NCUA, and that is a reasonable conclusion. If a federal agency won't tell you how it's spending your money, then you have a right to be concerned. So you think because it's credit union money, it's even more necessary to see, to have more details? Well, certainly, you know, agencies that receive taxpayer money are in theory, practice, and properly so, accountable to taxpayers. That's good news. The bad news is there's a lot of taxpayers. It's a really, really big group, okay? NCUA is not like that. The folks that pay their bills 
actually a very small group, it would be easy to be accountable to that small group. You wouldn't have to do it in a, in a language that the whole population could understand. You could use terms that are familiar to the credit union agent. You could, you could you speak the same language. It would be easy for the NCUA to satisfy the credit unions as to how it is spending your money.